Rub up your engines! Well, it looks like Toyota is planning to compete with the Maverick. The Toyota Stout looks like it's coming out. It's going to be like a $23,000 base price little pickup truck. And to me, I say hooray, because originally the Toyota pickup trucks were little pickup trucks and they were phenomenal. But then they started making bigger and bigger and bigger. But a lot of people like a smaller pickup truck, which Ford found out with the Maverick. Hey, they're selling the heck out of those things. They're marking them up way too much for people and screwing their own clientele over, but they can see they're popular. So Toyota is going to bring a smaller one back, which to me makes sense. A lot of people don't want this big monster truck. They like a small truck they can use for work, carry stuff all around, travel around in, but they don't want a big monstrosity that gets horrendous gas mileage. The smaller they are, the better gas mileage you get. For example, those Ford Mavericks, customers I had with them, they're all getting 30 something miles a gallon on the highway and those things, which is unheard of in a pickup truck, right? Ford better watch out because this Toyota Start's going to be coming out probably next year. They think they're going to come out in the 2024. Hey, if they they hit it right, they're going to make a ton of money. They made a ton of money on the old pickup trucks. They just got bigger like the American ones. And now, hey, Ford sells a lot of F-150s. Now they're selling a lot of little Mavericks. Toyota, if they come in, you know, originally the Ranger sold a lot more. Well, the Toyota Tacoma stole it away from Ranger a long time ago. They sell many, many times more Tacomas each year than Ford does Ranger. So Ford better watch out. The Toyota Stout is coming. Gray says, why is my new power steering rack acting weird after two months? I got an 06 Solera. 138,000 miles. Two months ago, I had the power steering rack changed because it was leaking. It handled great for two months, but now it feels light and it's all over the place. How can I make the steering wheel to get stiffer, not be so light? I changed all tires and did alignment. It didn't make any difference. A lot of guys will go for these remanufactured ones, and they do not remanufacture them all that well. Realize your power steering pump puts upwards of 1,500 pounds per square inch pressure, and when they rebuild them, a lot of times they just take them apart, put seals, and put them together. They don't hone them, put oversized seals, test them. They just take them apart, put new seals, new boots, and say, okay, voila, here we go. If you would have gotten a brand new rack, you probably wouldn't have that problem, right? But you didn't. And now you said it's turning way too easy. It just feels loose, right? Take it back to whoever did the work and say, I want this alignment checked. I want the rack to make sure you got everything tight. Maybe some bolts got loose, but if not, it was just remanufactured poorly. And it probably was a remanufactured rack. And that's what happens is they're stiff because they're sealed, right? Well, if they put new seals on a worn rack, the seals, the new seals aren't going to leak. But if they're on a worn rack, the pistons are worn too, right? And of course, worn pistons, they're going to wear those new seals out quickly. And you said two, three months later, it started acting weird. That's exactly what will happen. The worn pistons will break the seals and where it goes. So I tell people, in the long run, if you want to fix a car right, put a brand new steering rack. Don't mess with the rebuilt ones because a lot of times they're garbage. And I can just about guarantee you it's that rack. Nancy Drew one says, how do I change out the front side marker bulbs? Uh, my 2015 Nissan Versa without removing the headlight assembly. Well, unfortunately, you got to remove the headlight assembly. Nissan Versa is a cheaply made vehicle. It's all unitized, and you got to take that out. In order to take that out, you also have to take the bumper cover off, get it out of the way, pull it out. That's just how they manufacture them. They make them as cheaply as they can. So put a bunch of stuff on one part, then put it in, then put another part over that, and then realize they put the headlights on before they put the bumper on. So you got to take all that crap off to get it to get it off. Unfortunately, that's the only way. They're made that way. They don't want cars to be easy to fix because then you'll take it to the dealer and they'll charge you a whole bunch of money to fix it. That's part of it. The main thing is they're making them for as cheap as they can possibly manufacture them. So put as many parts as they can on one thing, put it in, put another thing on top of that. So you got to take half the car apart in order to get to something as simple as changing a bulb. Final man says, I have a 99 Silverado. My radio stopped playing sound and my cigarette lighter only half works. It's weird. I can plug my radar detector. It works, but my phone charger won't. The radio lights up, but no sound. If I hit a bump, it starts working again, but only for a while. Well, you might have a shot radio. That might be part of it, but here's the thing. It's a 99. It's old as the hills. Corrosion or an old fuse can easily do that. The fuse has to connect electricity, and if it's old and it's corroded, sometimes it'll work. Sometimes it won't work. Uh, it'll have enough power to run your radar detector. Charging your phone uses more power and it won't allow that much power to go through. So pray it's just a worn fuse. Go to your fuse box, take the fuse out for the radio and stuff, 
Put a new fuse in. That could easily fix it. And look where the fuse goes in if it's green and corroded. Get some spray electrical cleaner and a wire brush. Disconnect the battery so you don't short anything out. Then clean it all off. Put a new fuse in. That could easily fix it. Now if it's not that, you could have a ground wiring problem. The ground wire for the cigarette lighter and the radio could be going bad. And in that case, you can take the radio out and you see all the ground wire for there and the ground wire for the cigarette lighter. They're probably a common ground wire and you could just fix it. It's probably come loose or it's corroded. Because you have to have power and ground for a 12 volt direct electricity system to work. And it could easily be the ground wiring is what's doing it. Especially if you hit a bump and it's loose or something then you, and it connects then it doesn't connect. Could be as simple as a loose ground wire which GMs are notorious for. Aaron B says my 07 Honda has a heater blow and only blows in the middle. Everything on that thing is run by electronics and computers. For some reason your HVAC system, the vent system is stuck in the blowing in your face. But hey, at least be happy, it's blowing in your face. So you get heat, you get cold air. What if it was stuck just on heat or just on defrost, right? Then you wouldn't get cool or hot yourself. It's not a bad position to get it stuck in, right? But the only way you're going to figure that one out is you pay a guy like me with a fancy scan tool that does bi directional testing. We can see is it the module not sending information to them? Because our machines can say, let's open the valve. And if we say open the valve and we see the valve opens, we'll know the control unit's not working. Or we can say open a control and then a control doesn't open, then you'll know that that motor for the control is broken. Very complex stuff. Now you can stick your head under there, maybe somebody stuck their feet and kicked something and knocked the wire off, you never know. You can check that, but there's not much working room in there. If you can't see anything obvious, you're going to have to pay a mechanic like me to go through it with his fancy scan tools to figure it out. It could be real expensive. You might be happy with leaving it the way it is. Well watch out because the lawnmower wars are coming to America this spring. Now, a bunch of places are trying to ban gasoline lawnmowers, right? Oh, we're all going to be green now. Nah, we're going to have electric lawnmowers that cost twice as much and can only go a little way. Then the battery goes out. And then they say, well, just buy a bunch of extra batteries that cost a bunch of money, right? Keep them charged up. Where are you going to put them, right? Now, some states are trying to start the idea of no mow May. Don't mow your lawn in May. Right? Well, it's the beginning of May right now, as this is made. Let me tell you, here in Rhode Island, people mow their lawns all the time. Sometimes they mow them two or three times a week. They are lawn fanatics here. And if you tried to take their lawnmowers away, it would be like the Revolutionary War. They all don't tread on me. They'd be rattlesnakes waiting to bite someone if they stopped them from mowing their lawns. Now, next year, they're banning the sales of gas lawnmowers and stuff in California. And they say, oh, they pollute too much, la la la. They pollute more than a car does, right? And I just laugh my butts off. Because these people with their ridiculous statistics, yes, the lawnmowers do pollute some, right? Let's say you drive your car 20,000 miles a year. Right? How many miles do you drive your lawnmower? You know, how big is your yard, right? I'd say on mine, uh, bigger than an acre, and you mow it so many times a year, right? Maybe you're going 60 miles. I don't know, not that much. So the joke is, it really doesn't affect it that much, you know? But then they just make up these figures. Well, they pollute more than cars. Yeah, they don't have catalytic converters on the lawnmowers, right? Well, they don't go that far either. They're not running hardly at all. How long do you run a lawnmower, you know? My Mine takes about oh, 45 minutes the most. So it's 45 minutes. And you do it once a week in a summer and that's it. So it's not that much pollution, right? But these idiots think they're going to save the planet by banning gas powered lawnmowers. And of course, you know, the hippy dippies are coming out. Let the flowers grow in your yard. Oh, just leave it on natural. Yeah, well, around here, people will probably come and shoot you if you didn't mow your lawn. <laughs> It's a big pride thing in New England. People have beautifully manicured lawns and their, all their plants are trimmed, nice trees, you know. You tell them that they can't do their lawn, or they'll have a revolution, you know. It'll be a, the second American Revolution. You won't let us mow us lawn. We have lawn rights here. Some towns that want this no mow May are saying we will not issue citations in months for people who have their lawn growing wild with weeds, right? I mean, I've been in many places in my time. I'm tell you, if your lawn wasn't mowed and you let it go wild, the city would mow it and then charge you and you'd get a fine for it, right? But now they say, no, it's green. It's great. Let's make it that way. Let's have everything just go wild and crazy, you know? Well, I don't think that's going to fly 
die in New England, you know, let me tell you. Maybe in New Mexico, because their lawns are basically desert with sand and maybe some sagebrush and stuff. <laughs> hey, I wouldn't mind if I lived there. I wouldn't have to mow a lawn. It'd be fine by me. I like deserts. I think it looks cool, right? Once in a while, maybe you get out with a rake and rake the dead stuff up. <laughs> but let me tell you, in New England, you tell people they can't mow their lawns, you're talking revolution here. People are going to be fomenting revolution if they can't mow their lawns with their lawnmowers that they've had for 20, 30 years. And trying to replace them with super expensive electric ones that don't last as long, that cost a whole bunch more, thousands more, it's not going to cut the mustard, let me tell you. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.